2022. Amen. From Rivers of Living Water Cathedral at 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that today's word will be a blessing to you and give you some answers to questions that you have been pondering. And now, Apostle Dr. Robert L. Jones will bring us this morning's message. Thank you, Reverend Sword. To all of you out there tuning in by social media, Happy New Year's to you. I'm excited about this year of 2022. We have a word that we feel is going to be a great way to begin this this new year as we um, challenge you with God's word. Uh, today's subject is this. Obey the heavenly vision God gave you. Obey the heavenly vision God gave you. Our, our lesson is coming out of the book of Acts, the 26th chapter. Pastor Joyce is coming at this time to read uh, the verses uh, 19 through 29 of the 26th chapter of the book of Acts. And uh, again, this lesson, very short lesson, it will deal with obey the heavenly vision God gave you. And God gave to you all a heavenly vision. But we're going to take a look at what God means when he calls something <laughs> Heavenly vision. Acts, the 26th chapter, beginning at verse 12. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, King, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but you first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, 
witnessing both to small and great, mm -hmm. saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should shew light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, mm -hmm. before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. <laughs> king Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou hast persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Well, that's our scripture lesson. We wanted to set that up so that it would perhaps make a little more sense to what we want to deliver unto you today. Obey the heavenly vision God gave you. Out of Acts 26, chapter, verse number 19, the key verse says, where upon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. In verse 20, but in obeying this heavenly vision or this divine assignment from God, I first preached to those in Damascus. In obeying this heavenly vision from God, I then went and I preached in Jerusalem and in obeying God, this vision, I went into all of Judea and in obeying this heavenly vision from God. I went to those despised people called the Gentiles. I gave them the message of salvation in Christ Jesus. I preach that all must repent of their sins and turn to the one and true living God. Now by obeying this heavenly vision that God gave me, it did not make everybody happy. When God gives you a... Now, what, what God calls a heavenly vision... See, what man calls a heavenly vision is different than what God calls a heavenly vision. Because when God gives you this heavenly vision, it's not going to make everybody happy. Verse 221 goes on to let us know that the Jews were not happy about this assignment from God to Paul, and they wanted to kill him. They arrested him. I wanted to kill, kill him. I've been into some situations that I didn't know if I was going to come out dead or alive, fulfilling 
the heavenly vision that God gave me. But I knew what God had assigned for me to do. So the Jews arrested me, he said, in the temple. For doing what God told me to do, which was to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And for that, they were not happy. When you give yourself to Christ and begin to do the vision that God and Christ have given you, even your household many times are not happy. They may be saying like Festus, Paul, you're mad. All your learning have made you mad. Why would you get with those Jesus freaks? Why would you get with that noisy crowd? After all, we come from a certain part of town, from a certain community, from the gated community. We don't associate with those kinds of misbehaved fanatics. But Paul knew that God had given him an assignment. And this assignment that God gave him was called a heavenly vision. Mm. So Paul said they tried to wanted to kill me, but God uh, intervened. I'm going to tell you when God has given you an assignment until that assignment is complete, he will certainly intervene and the things that they try to do against you cannot happen. Uh, I've been faced with death so many times. I've been threatened for preaching the gospel. I have. But you see, their upset problem was not my problem, it was their problem. Mm -hmm. I was just doing what God instructed me to do. Even my Mother Jones, even when I was in the city for 18 years preaching the gospel, even those that were of the same church denomination, many of those came against me. And I had to go outside of the church denomination to gain a preaching friend from a completely different denomination. So you don't make everybody happy when you are following this heavenly vision that God gave you. God had given Paul this heavenly vision of preaching the gospel of the kingdom as we see in verse number 16 where Paul is testifying to King Agrippa and he tells King Agrippa that the Lord, he said, King, the Lord appeared unto me and told me to rise, stand on my feet. Let's look at verse 16 again. We read a sister don't. But rise and stand upon thy feet. Uh huh. For I have appeared unto thee for, for this purpose. I have appeared unto you, and I didn't appear unto you empty. I, oh my God, appeared unto you because there's a purpose. Yes, to make 
that you have to carry out. He said, I have appeared unto you. And he begins to address the purpose. The purpose. God has appeared unto you. And sometimes people run from God when he appears. Listen at this. And they hop on another ship. It's Jonah did. Instead of where he was supposed to go, he went to hop on a different ship. Sometimes different ships can be churches that you were not even called to. God calls you to a place to raise you, oh my God, up for purpose. But, Brother don't see all of my friends, they go to that church across town. God did not call you to the church across town. For you to carry out your purpose, you may have to be at the river for a season. Mm. But we want to please, I'm gonna please this person, I'm gonna please this person, I'm gonna do I, 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 and I, and I, 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 I'm deciding for myself, I like the music at that church. I. Those church have more boys, and I've been looking for husbands. So I'm going to go over there. <laughs> well, I found out that the devil really attends a whole lot of churches, people. So, that, well, well, but you sometimes I think it's a good catch. <laughs> Throw it back. It's, 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 it's like a garfish. You get that gar, you, you, you fight and get it in. You get it in, you throw it back. <laughs> throw it back. <laughs> Something better way than me. So, he says, and he begins to address the purpose. I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. I have appeared unto you. I've come to you. I've chosen you. I called you. I gave you this vision for this purpose. To make thee a minister. I want, oh my, 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 my. I called you not for some organization to make you a minister. I called you not from some denomination to set you up in position. I called you, Paul, well, that I can make, make, form you into, bring you into, make you a minister. A minister. And a witness. And I called you to make you, as the Holy Ghost says, and you shall be witness. So the Lord calls you to be minister and to be witness, yes. Both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. I've got some things that you're not ready to see yet, uh, brother dad, but there are some things that I've already shown you, but there are some other things that I'm going to appear to you about, son. Why? Because I have determined to make you. To make you. To make you. Well, I decided I'm going to go to this school and that school and this school and the way we could go someplace and go into school being a believer and come out being an agnostic. Going to a seminary believing in the birth and come out and say, I don't think that's really right. Mm -hmm. But when God makes you, when God forms you, yeah. when God puts it into you, put the purpose into you, then you know that purpose 
is your very life. That you believe. Hallelujah. So, the purpose was to be an anointed preacher and a developer of the message of the kingdom. Verse 17. Delivering me from the people. Now, let me explain some things that this entails. It entails, as I make you, it entails, this how many it entails? Delivering what? Delivering me from the people mm -hmm. and from the Gentiles. Listen, the Lord will keep you. Read on. Delivering me from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom thou I send thee. Uh-huh. You see, some, 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 of the, some people want to kill you and they don't understand that you come to bring them life. You come to, to bring them hope. Read on. To open their eyes. I have given you a heavenly vision to open the eyes of those that think that they really know something and all they know is religious practices. They have no life abiding in them, but they go to somebody's church every Sunday and do religious stuff. But I told you, I'm making you, I'm forming you, I'm anointing you to be an eye opener. And to turn them from darkness to light. I'm anointing you. To turn people's lives and hearts and minds around, it takes the anointing. Yes, it does. Yes. Yes, it does. To do that. Yes. Yes. And from the power of Satan under I'm anointing you. To turn them from where from? From the power of Satan. He says Satan has some power here. Satan has some people bound. Yes, Satan has some people trapped. Mm -hmm. Satan has some people addicted. Satan has some people suicidal. Mm -hmm. Satan has some people all jacked up. But I have anointed you. I've given you what you need so that you can turn people from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto, God. unto the power of God. That? And that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And that they may receive the outcome in where I have given you this heavenly vision to do that they may receive forgiveness of sin, forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them. And the they Jesus. may receive and or they the sanctified inheritance by yes. faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. And then in verse 19. He goes on to make him understand this heavenly vision to be done God's way could only be accomplished through the Holy Ghost. Religion can never accomplish this. And that's why you have people that I believe that's born again and yet have problems with somebody's skin color. But when the Holy Ghost makes you, the Holy Ghost puts all of God in you. Thank you. But the nature of God, which is what? Absolute 100% love. So, this heavenly vision to be done 
God's way could only be accomplished through the Holy Ghost, not by the devices or the approval or the disapproval of man. Look at verses uh, 19 through to, to 26, where he says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the he heavenly vision, but what? But, but you first unto them of Damascus. But I went first into Damascus. And at Jerusalem. I followed the vision. There was death waiting to greet me, but I followed the vision. There were haters there to oppose me, but I followed the heavenly vision. Read on. And throughout all of the coast of Judea, I went into Judea. And then to the Gentiles. Then I went even to the Gentiles. That they should repent and turn. And I God. gave them the message that the heavenly vision told me to give them read. And do works meet for repentance. Uh-huh. For these causes the Jews called And me for the causes that I did to accomplish the calling of the heavenly vision. For that cause, the Jews caught me, they arrested me in the temple, and they were trying to find ways to snuff me completely out. Verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, but they didn't know who sent me. They don't, didn't know that I was coming to bring them life, and they're trying to kill the one that came to bring them life. Mm. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. And now, until this day, I've been through it all, and we won't go there, because my time is about shot. But we get into some of the Corinthians and we see all of the struggles and all of the things that Paul went through, all of the beatings, all of the stonings, all of the betrayals, all of the snake bites, you name it, all that Paul went through as he followed the heavenly vision. Now, this heavenly vision that Paul was talking about is an assignment from God. Man's view of heavenly vision in heaven and God's view of heavenly vision are so different. Man's view is, oh, the cushiony clouds. <laughs> oh, the wonderful Music. Oh, it's so heavenly. Oh, everyone likes me. It's so beautiful. It's so heavenly. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, every place I go, there's just all type of blessings. All kind of cars fall in my path. I have 20 homes. Oh, what a wonderful heavenly vision. So man's view of heavenly vision and God's view are completely opposite. Mm. So God's view is simply this. An assignment that he gives you, listen, with the Holy Ghost. That's it. And you need the Holy Ghost to do the assignment. that vision or assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 
Now, as I close, what is the heavenly vision with purpose that God has given you? Are you looking to be approved by man to fulfill the assignment with purpose that God has already given you? That God has already called you to? Or as you face all of the opposition, will you say, like Paul said to King Agrippa, I was not disobedient, King, until the assignment oh, yeah, from heaven, that divine assignment that God gave me. Yes! There will be times that it will seem like all hell has broken out since you have pursued doing the heavenly vision that God assigned you to do. The thing that God has engaged you in, what is it? Stop thinking that. It's going to be one where even your mama is going to approve. Sometimes mamas and daddies and brothers and sisters will be the ones that's against you the most. Mm. My God. Does your called out heavenly vision assignment involve you being engaged with youth? Oh, Lord, I don't want to be engaged with that group of people. Boy, I tell you, boy, they know, oh, boy, they're so unmanageable, this and that. Did God call you to it? He will equip you. I said he will equip you. He will anoint you so until those youth will think, this is Monday or Tuesday. I what, can't wait to send you to get here because that, those youth uh, teachers and all that, they, they've done so much good in directing my life. Hmm. Have you been called to nursing home? Is that the heavenly vision that God has called you to? Well, why, why quit? Did God tell you to quit? Is your work done? Paul, uh, 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 Paul said in verse 22, Having therefore obtained help of God, the what he said. I continue. I continue. I continue. Until this day. I continue. Are you continuing to this day? Witnessing both to small and great. Are you involved in only the great? Mm. Or are you talking to those? that have no name, no fame, no claim. You said, I continue until this day, witnessing both. To all of them, the small, the great. Saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Hallelujah. So, are you called to the shut-ins, sometimes shut-ins are not in this room. Sometimes they're in their own little neighborhood home. Amen. Those your have your heavenly vision directed you to the addicted. And addiction can just vex you to no end. But the Holy Ghost will give you strength. Will anoint and appoint you 
to hallelujah, to help them to be delivered. Stop trying to go in there on your own strength and say, Holy Ghost, now this certainly is a job. But I need you to help me in. Because you purpose them for a job in your kingdom not to be messed up in some type of chemical dependence. No, I realize that that's not a popular area to work in, but is that the heavenly vision that God has called you to? How about those drunkards that dumpster diving? Have God engaged you to be involved with that group of people? Or are you saying, no, I don't know, that's just a way to the life. God, you just, I tell you, just, no, you're called to deliver them. That is the heavenly vision. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Are you called to the prisons, the imprisons, the prisoner, those that's incarcerated? That's a part of God's heavenly vision. so close to suicide. Those are saying, I have no reason to continue in life. Every direction that I turn is a dead end. Is that the heavenly vision that God has called you to. Hallelujah. Oh, what about the rich? Yes. Yes. Everyone aspiring to be rich but don't understand many of their problems. Those that have this world's goods, but their whole life is a total empty wreck. Has he called you to go and to drop a word of hope on them? Because they don't know Christ. Is your heavenly vision sending you to that lonely 
boy. That lonely girl. You can tell how lonely they are because their life is full of fantasies after fantasies. Is your heavenly vision sending you to the handicap? I don't want to be bothered with them. I don't want to lift them. I don't want this. I don't want that. But if the heavenly vision is sending you there, you will be quick to handle the assignment. <coughs> so, stop saying what people say. Somebody ought to go. Somebody ought to do it. And start saying like Isaiah said in Isaiah 6 and 8. He said, Lord, here I am. Give me your heavenly vision. Send me. I'll go. As a man, you think, as I said, it's all about wonderful and glorious and lovely things, but God's heavenly vision is a vision that you are sent on to get people ready for heaven. What is your heavenly vision? Then tell someone, I refuse to be disobedient to the heavenly vision. If you've been enlightened or challenged today, friend us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will get notified every time that we post. We invite those who live in Fremont, Ohio area to join us in person on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for a time of studying God's Word and building your foundation in Him. Or come next Sunday at 10 a.m. for a time of family worship. We're located at 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Intercessory prayer warriors faithfully take each prayer request to the Lord. Send your prayer request or financial blessing to us at Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. You can also go to our webpage, rolwohio.com, where you can connect to us through uh, email, link to our social media posts, or also link to our PayPal account. We look forward to hearing from you, and remember, there is no God like our God, nowhere.